Hello world, today I'm going to show you how to create a Mac OS X El Capitan guest machine in VirtualBox on a host computer that is not running Mac OS X. This is very useful if you already have a nice PC with expensive hardware and you do not want to spend another US $2000 or more on an equivalent Mac computer. There are three things you're going to need in order to install a guest OS. You're going to need VirtualBox version 5 or later. You're going to need either another Macintosh computer or a Hackintosh virtual machine. Now if you're going to be running a Hackintosh virtual machine, you're going to need a way to transfer files to and from the machine. You can set up a MAMP server on the Hackintosh, or your host computer can have an Apache server that has a PHP script that allows file uploading. Transferring files to or from your Hackintosh virtual machine is outside the scope of this tutorial, as is creating the Hackintosh itself. And third, you're going to need an Apple ID. First thing, in your Macintosh or your Hackintosh in this case, Open up the App Store. Search for El Capitan. Click on the button labeled Git. Now provide your Apple ID and your password in order to download the El Capitan OS. After following the prompts, the Git button will change to read Downloading, and your download will begin. Now this is going to take a while. The operating system is over 6 gigabytes in size, so be patient. Whenever the operating system has finished downloading, you'll see an icon in your launch pad that says Install OS X El Capitan. Now let's create a shell script. This shell script is going to handle all the commands needed in order to make a bootable install image. First, provide the command to mount the installer image. Then we're going to need to provide the command to create the El Capitan blank ISO image of a specific size and a specific partition map. Then we're going to mount the blank ISO image that we just created. Then we're going to restore the base system onto that blank ISO image. Then we're going to remove our package links and replace them with the actual files. Next, we'll copy the installer dependencies for El Capitan. Then we're going to unmount the installer image. Then we'll unmount the new El Capitan ISO image. And we'll convert the El Capitan ISO image to ISO CD master. We'll rename our new ISO image and move it to the desktop. Now that you have your shell script created and saved to your hard disk, open up the terminal in your launch pad. Run the shell script in your terminal. Whenever the shell script is done, you'll see the El Capitan ISO image saved to your desktop. And now you're going to have to move it off of your Mac computer and onto whatever host computer that it is that you're going to be using. Now on your host computer, open up VirtualBox and click on New. Give your new virtual machine a name and click on Next. You can stick with the recommended memory size of 2 gigabytes. Click on Next. Create a new virtual hard disk and click on Create. Select Create a virtual hard disk now and click on Next. Select Dynamically Allocated and click on Next. I recommend resizing your hard drive to at least 60 gigabytes and then click on Create. Now on your host computer, create a shell script. Because Mac OS X is only designed to be run on certain types of hardware, we have to spoof that type of hardware in VirtualBox. And that's what this shell script is going to do. Have these commands in your shell script if you want to emulate a MacBook Pro. Or if you would prefer to emulate an iMac, run these commands instead. Or alternately, if you want to emulate a Mac Mini, you can run these commands in your shell script instead. Now for some host computers, it might be necessary to spoof the processor type on your computer, but it's possible that you don't need to do this. If you try installing the guest OS and it's not successful, you can come back and try to run one of these commands to spoof the CPU. You can spoof the Linsfield i5 CPU in this way. Or alternately, there are also two different ways to spoof the Ivy Bridge chipset. Here's the first way, and here's the second way. One thing you can do that's optional is change the screen resolution size for your computer. In this case, we're going to change the screen resolution to 1440 by 900. Then save the shell script in the same directory where your VirtualBox guest OS is saved and run it. There won't be any output to the terminal, so the only way you're going to know if it really worked is by continuing with the setup process and see if you're lucky. Now in VirtualBox, click on Settings, then click on the Storage tab, and click on the empty disk, then open the dialog to choose a virtual optical disk for our El Capitan ISO. And if it's not already selected in your drop down menu, click on Choose Virtual Optical Disk File. Navigate to the El Capitan ISO and then click on Audio. We're going to disable our audio because we don't need it for the setup process. Click on OK and click on System. Uncheck the floppy disk. And there's no need for it here. Also, try changing the chipset to PIIX3 and click on the Processor tab. I recommend giving it at least two processors for the setup process. Leave the execution cap at 100% and then click on OK. Now click on the start button in VirtualBox. If everything went well, you'll see a bunch of debugging text in the console when you start the virtual machine. As long as the machine follows through with startup, you can safely ignore any errors you see. 
If it hangs on the message that says missing Bluetooth controller, the script you just ran on the host machine may not have worked. If that's the case, go back, make sure that you got the name of your guest machine correct in all of your commands, rerun it, and if that doesn't work, try spoofing the chipset. For the rest of this tutorial, we're going to be viewing our Mac El Capitan guest machine in scaled mode. So we'll click on view in scaled mode and have it maximized to the width of the screen. We'll select English for our main language. Now once we get to this page, don't click on continue just yet. Go up to the utilities menu and click on disk utility. The hard disk that we just created needs to be formatted. So click on VBox hard disk and click on the erase button. Hard drive a name and click on erase. A dialog will appear notifying you that the disk was successfully formatted. Click on done and then click on the red X to close out disk utility. Now you're ready to press continue here. Accept the license agreement, click on continue, then click on agree. Select the new hard disk that we just formatted and then click on continue. And now OS X is installing itself. This will take a while. Your computer will automatically restart whenever OS X has finished installing itself. After the restart, select the country that you live in and click continue. Select the appropriate keyboard layout and click continue. Select don't transfer any information now and click on continue. Disable location services on this Mac and click on continue. Then click on don't use. Select don't sign in and click on continue. Click on skip. Click on agree. Once again click on agree. Create a user account with a username and password. Click on continue. Select the time zone on the map that you live in and click on continue. Turn off sending diagnostic and usage data to Apple and click on continue. And then your Mac will finish setting itself up. Once it's done it'll ask you to confirm your keyboard type. Click on continue. Follow the prompt. Push the key and press done. And that's all there is to setting up an El Capitan guest virtual machine on VirtualBox on a host computer that is not running Mac OS X. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.